think it's probably one of the most uh, difficult questions that people face when a son or daughter identifies as gay and, and is uh, going to um, to formalize their, their relationship with a civil wedding is, can I go and, and be part of that? Um, it's a very emotional question. And I, I think a lot of times when we start that conversation, uh, people are coming from the perspective that I, I don't feel like I have much of a choice. Uh, if I don't want to lose my child, then I, I have to uh, do what they're asking me to do. Now, the thing is, our responsibility as, as disciples, as, as Catholic Christians, is first of all to live virtuous lives ourselves, uh, but also to give good example and help other people uh, to live virtuous lives. So, when I'm talking to a parent uh, who's in this situation, um, it's clear that they don't think that what their child is doing is a good idea um, and that they wouldn't choose it for themselves and you know if they could convince their son or daughter that really it's not part of God's plan for them to be uh, in such a, a marriage then, um, then they'd like to convince them of that but oftentimes they can't obviously so then the question is well can I be part of that celebration um, to do that would, would be to do what the church refers to as cooperating uh, with someone else's uh, evil action or, or, or bad decision. Um, the parent wouldn't do that themselves. It's obvious that they, that they don't share that same idea as their son or daughter. But they have a moral obligation uh, not to let other people think that this is all fine, that this is what uh, what the church teaches, or this is part of God's plan. Uh, and so there are, there are principles that the church provides to help us to understand when can I be part of someone else's um, sinful action um, without uh, it being, without it being, a, a, you know, a, an impermissible form of cooperation. So we can't ever participate in someone's action because we agree with them and we want to help them, right? That's we're responsible for the same sin that the other person is committing. Um, when it's clear that our motive and our intention is different than theirs, uh, still the church asks us to, uh, first of all, keep a sufficient distance uh, from, uh, from the action itself so that if our, um, if our being there or participating is somehow uh, necessary to the other person doing what they're going to do, then we, it's not permissible for us to do that. We're, we're helping them to do something that we know is morally wrong. Um, we also have to consider how public it is and, and whether it can, as the church says, give scandal. In other words, confuse people about what the church teaches and whether that's important and real and valid or not. Um, and, and also we have to have a proportionally serious reason for taking that risk of scandalizing uh, somebody else by uh, confusing them about what the church teaches. So I think it's very, very difficult to justify uh, participating in a, in a wedding that we know is not valid according to how the church understands what valid marriage is. Um, and so, uh, you know, to go and, and be present at a ceremony, to go and take part in a reception, um, is, it's really hard to distinguish that from celebrating along with the people who are uh, who are going through the wedding, right? Unless you're going to sit there with a little sign that says, don't worry, I think this is all a terrible idea, and sit there grumpy, and, and that's just rude. Like, that's, that's not even charitable, <laughs> let alone, uh, you know, helping people to see the truth. And so I think really because being at a wedding is so closely connected and so, so it's going to be so connected in people's minds with celebration uh, that it's, it's really hardly ever possible for us to do that without sending the wrong message about uh, what the church teaches and what God's plan is for marriage. So I would always advise parents and, and other loved ones not to go. So I think, first of all, uh, hopefully the, the parents or the other loved ones are, are building a foundation of respect and compassion. Uh, not just for their son or daughter, but also for their loved one's partner, so that uh, when it comes time where they have to say, um, you know, I can't do this, uh, it, it's possible for them to recognize that it's not a, a judgment on the person, 
uh, or a rejection of, of their loved one or their loved one's partner, but, um, but it has to do with, with conscience and with the action that the loved one is, is uh, expecting them to do. Um, and then to keep it um, you know, focused on that, to say, um, listen, you know that I love you very much and nothing's ever gonna change that. You've seen that I don't have any animosity against a person, this person that's so big a part of your life. I'm glad that you, you care about each other so deeply. But what you're asking me to do is something that I can't do without, without going against what I believe is God's plan, not just for, for you, but for, for, uh, for us and for, for everybody who's uh, striving to live out their relationship the way that God desires. Um, and so I would not ask you to change your decisions or, or to, uh, to change what you're going to do just to please me or, to, or so that I could believe that you loved me. Um, but I, I just would ask for that same respect in return, uh, that you wouldn't ask me to do something that goes against what I believe to be true and right, um, just and make that a condition of you believing that, that I, I still love you. Um, it's a difficult conversation, but I think if, if people can stay calm and, and cheerful and, and really, as I say, focus on the action, not on the person, uh, that it's possible to, to come to some point of mutual understanding. doesn't mean that, the, that their loved one is going to be happy about it and might be very painful, especially in the short term. Uh, but I think if we can put it in that context, it, it, we might eventually be able to come to an understanding. I would say uh, parents and loved ones should do that as soon as they get the save the date or the invitation, um, put some distance between the time of that conversation and the time of, of the celebration so that uh, it's clear to the loved one they're not trying to, to steal their joy that day and make everything about them. Um, always, if whenever possible, to have that conversation face to face, not in a text, not in an email, even I would say not in a phone call if it's possible to, to see one another, but to you know be able to look each other in the eye, to hear each other's tone of voice, uh, to um, to really kind of demonstrate by the way that you have that conversation that what you feel uh, for your loved one, um, and then to to recognize that the loved one is probably going to be very upset about this, um, not to push it, not to ask for a response necessarily right away. Um, not to take offense and, and certainly not to show offense uh, if the loved one reacts um, in, a, in an angry or, or a hurt way, uh, but just to continue to offer support as much as possible uh, throughout that conversation. Well, I think first of all, we have to uh, always maintain our trust and hope um, that God wants reconciliation and harmony and love in our families even more than we do, right? And so we, we should try not to ever think of something as permanently damaged. Um, that even if we have to wait until the resurrection in the last day, that we, we hope that eventually we come to, can come to a point uh, of a mutual understanding and reconciliation. Um, hopefully it comes much sooner than that. Um, but I think it has to be said, you know, respectfully and, and, and with concern that if the only way to maintain a relationship uh, is by capitulating to an ultimatum that, that really violates uh, one's conscience, it's not, that's not going to be a healthy relationship. That sometimes for the sake of, of maintaining the truth and uh, maintaining um, you know, one's conscience and ability to, to speak from the heart, sometimes we do have to take a step back uh, from a relationship uh, rather than to uh, give in to keep peace at any cost. Um, so I think what, what we need to do in the meantime is certainly never stop praying uh, for, for our loved one, for their, uh, their partner, um, that, they'll, that God will uh, fill them with his grace, that he'll give them the light of truth, that he'll be able to, that they'll be able to see themselves the way that he sees them and understand his plan for them. You know, we have to fervently intercede uh, every chance we get for that. Not telling what God what to do or how to handle it, but trusting 
their situation to his providence. Um, and then to ask for the grace for ourselves uh, to let go of hurt feelings, to let go of um, unfulfilled expectations, uh, to let go of whatever might be an obstacle so that if our loved one, son or daughter or sibling should come back someday and want to talk about things again or want to reconnect, that we're never in a position where we say, well, it's too little, too late. You should have called me months ago or years ago. Um, really to ask God to give us the grace um, to, to always be ready uh, for the possibility of reconciling and getting back in, in a good relationship.